Hello everybody. I'm really happy to be here today at b a m u n g r a t International Hospital because today we have the honor of talking to Dr. Carl g a l a w a n t a w a n i who is actually a pediatrician and a pediatric allergist and pulmonologist at the hospital so that he can advise us on some of the safety precautions that we can implement during COVID-19 when school opens. Well, that's, thank you for inviting me here and I have, uh, it's my honor to be here. To help you a little bit about the health uh, concern issues, for my part, um, about the medical medical point of view, about the two sides, you know, about from the the patients, from the um, uh, family, from the students side, and from the school. For the students, for the family, the the most important thing is I think they have to keep your child healthy mm-hmm. at the, all the time. Okay. Uh, means that you have to be like eating good food, healthy food, mm-hmm. stay healthy, uh, doing some exercise, sleeping well, uh, getting immunization. That especially for the influenza, for the flu shot, we don't have the COVID vaccine yet, mm-hmm. but uh, we have to, you know, stay healthy in the way of the, you know, don't put themselves at risk mm-hmm. of any, you know, uh, illness or any situation that. Increase the risk to get in infectious disease, including COVID. From the school point of view, the good part is nowadays we're talking about you know this is the um, the end of June. The incidence, the numbers of the COVID in Thailand is is much almost minimal. Okay, and I say that the government has done a lot of good works on that part, and uh, so uh, we don't have really have a in country cases during the past. Month at all, so uh, I think you already have you know those screening methods, you know like the temperature scanning, uh, hand the sanitizing. good hand sanitizing, yeah, good hand washing hand with washing alcohol. With right? yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So there's a few things that that uh, that's a good practice, and and I think it's a good idea to keep the the students get used to how to do the good hand washing to become a habit, mm-hmm. the good habits. The other thing is going to be a little bit uh, different from before the COVID is the distancing. Right, right. Okay. So you have to have a good distancing protocol in everywhere in the school, mm-hmm. you know, starting from the the lineup, right. going you know in on the ent- in the entrance, and then in the in the classroom, mm-hmm. you know you have to have at, at least about one to two meters apart, uh, minimizing the the contact the uh, personal contact. Between the students, because sometimes it's a little bit difficult. Kids, when they go together, they stay in groups. Right. They play together. They get you know very close contact to each other. So you have to have some school policy or something that or regulation that to help to minimize that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Let's say like if you want to like uh, the class, the 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 schedule of the classroom g o i n g to be a little bit overlapping, so they don't come out together at the same time. Right, right. Something like that. Okay. So right now our lunch breaks are separated so uh-huh. that there's um, there's enough space for everybody to be sitting one meter apart. Okay. And also for the, like playground, we also break will break the children into small groups mm-hmm. so that within one space there's only maybe you know um, yeah. limited number of children and okay. then they can rotate. Mm-hmm. And then after every round of playground or lunch or anywhere that the children use the. Um, The housekeeping, uh, the school team will be there to sanitize after every use, yep. um, mm-hmm. and obviously face masks. But yep. our school will be pro- um, requiring face shields too in the beginning. Okay, yeah. so that's a good idea. I, th- I think it's a very good idea for that part. The most important thing is a face mask face and mask. good hand washing. Okay. So just now you mentioned about you know soon maybe influenza season will come. Yep. So is there a possibility of contracting both influenza and COVID? At the same time, well, that's a very good question because usually every year during the the rainy season, mm-hmm. the peak flu season in Thailand is in August, around August September. Right. Okay, and uh, and one of the most common germs uh, is the influenza. Every year, others, including like RSV, mm-hmm. uh, hand, foot, and mouth disease, you know, they all come to, at, around the same time. So to me, this year going to be a little bit different because. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition to whatever we have before, you know, like flu, uh, this year we have to be careful about the COVID-19 also. So, to me, 
uh, there's a chance that if you get uh, influenza, you can have uh, COVID together at the same time. Uh, meaning that you have increasing the COVID cases in Thailand, oh. okay? Mm -hmm. But at this point, at this time, I think the case is so minimum. Mm -hmm. So so be aware of that, but, but you know, don't over panic on that part. Mm -hmm. So for the other, like influenza, um, they can get a vaccine. Yep, right? they can get a vaccine. It helps, yeah, about 85% of the cases. Mm -hmm. And uh, every year, uh, this is the time to get it around, like after Songkran, anytime for the southern strain of the, of the influenza. And suppose we reopen school and there is a, you know, let's hope it doesn't happen, but if there were a confirmed case in maybe an adult or a child, mm -hmm. um, we would be closing the school for at least two weeks. Do you think that that's a um, sufficient time to be disinfecting and also having that, you know, uh, separating the mm -hmm. infected person? Do you think that's enough time? Well, first of all, I think we have to follow the government recommendation or regulation on that part. Uh, to me, the two weeks uh, from the last contact, right. from the last case, index case, that's, that's uh, enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, if you have only one case right. and you, quar you quarantine every day, you close right. the school, yeah, for, uh, two weeks, that should be enough. Yes. So I think um, our concern, but also the parents, our parents' concern is uh, more towards younger children as well. Um, because, you know, young children like to touch each other and yes. we'll try our, mm -hmm. our staff will try our best to socially distance them. But what if they do come into contact with each other, but they will have um, a face mask or face shield on and a face shield on. Um, do you think we should be worried if that happens? That's okay though. To me, I think that's a normal activities of the kids. You know, and we already have um, protection gear as much as we can already. So kids have to play each other. I think that's normal. You cannot too, too strict for them. I mean, sometimes you can help a little bit. You can minimize something, but, but uh, they have to play each other and that's okay. We cannot separate them. Otherwise, why they have to come to school? You know? oh, they if they're very school. young, it's yeah, a yeah, little yeah, bit hard. Yeah, 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 they, they, they can, can play, play each other and, and that's all right. right. Okay, and then another question is that for very young students, like two to four years old, they nap at the school. Mm -hmm. I think a question um, that many parents would like to know is if they should be wearing a face mask while they're sleeping or, or they shouldn't. There's two signs of that. Face, mm -hmm. face mask can help to protect germs right. to that person. At the same time, uh, the recommendation, especially in the young kids, they don't want to wear the face mask. Mm -hmm. We don't recommend to wear the face mask. Right. And the reason is because it's very difficult to breathe. During sleeping. During sleeping, or even sometimes while awake, sometimes it's, it's difficult too. Yeah. So, so to me, especially in the baby, you know, in the baby, it's, it's very difficult. So to me, uh, if they're sleeping, it's okay to not wearing the, vest, the face mask. Mm -hmm. It's okay to do that. And and if they're not sleeping, if they're learning and playing, um, do you agree with maybe wearing it for um, maybe two hours and then taking it off so they can breathe properly for a little bit and then wear it again? What is your recommendation? To me, I don't think we have to be too strict on that part. With the very young kids? Very, very, very young kids. They can wear it, they can take it off. It's coming out. You can just put it back on when you see it. You know, it has it not have, have to be too strict on, on that part because otherwise... Also because they cannot communicate to us, exactly. they cannot breathe properly. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, if you come, become too, too strict for them, then they won't, um, it's not going to be natural. It's, it's going to be... Very forced. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not the way it's supposed to be when you go to school. Kids have to play, have to laugh, have to sing, have to, right. you know. So to me, if you're strict too much, then they... they they cannot do that, they cannot do this. Mm -hmm. So you, you let them wear masks and that's okay. And, try, and you try, and if it's come off, it's okay. okay. You stay there, that's fine. It's Sleeping, better. take it off. It's yeah. better to monitor their health, Yeah. right? Exactly. That they're in good exactly. health, they don't have a high temperature, they're exactly. not exhibiting symptoms. Exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's, that's more important. That's yeah. more important. Yes. And then the other question is about, um, is it more, when, if younger children catch COVID-19, is it more dangerous for them than if an older child or an adult caught it? Uh, nowadays, we know that the, the COVID-19 you know, infected in adults 
and the elderly more than in younger kids, in the, in the babies. So to me, the incidence and the number of the, the kids who are going to have COVID-19 infection is much less than adults. Uh, so the chance to get infection is much less. At the same time, the, if they get the, the infection, the chance to spreading to other kids, to big uh, kids or adults is also less than adults to adults. So in your opinion, after closure for three months and the children having to do online learning, um, can you explain the social emotional benefits that will happen when they return to school? Well, to tell you the truth, um, the kids are going to love that. They want to come to see each other, their friends. They want to come back to school. I have a lot of my patients that are just looking forward to the school opening, you know, because they miss the school, they miss their friends. And, uh, but online learning is, um, is, is a good thing that, you know, we have that in the way of the better than nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, school closed. If you don't have any online learning, then it's, it's, it's much worse. Mm -hmm. And online learning is good, but it's not as good as when you go back to the school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so if, you, if the kids all go back to the school, they're going to have social, emotional, everything going to come back like kids the way it's supposed to be. You know, so I, I think it's very important. And that may be one of the first priority for kids to go to school. So this is, um, the next question is not really about COVID, but just sickness in general. Um, obviously when children go to school, they are exposed to more germs because there's mm -hmm. more people. Yeah. And, um, but I want to ask you about immunity. Um, mm -hmm. How does immunity develop, the immune system develop? Um, is it important sometimes to I mean, to get sick sometimes, so that the body develops um, a stronger immune system. Can you advise on that? Well, uh, kids, especially in the young age, less than, I would say less than five, six years old, uh, when they go to school kindergarten, uh, they get sick quite often. often. Right. And part of that is that's normal, mm -hmm. okay? And it's seasonal also. You know, you have, as I said, that you see more during the rainy season in Thailand. Uh, because there's a lot of germs mm -hmm. and uh, when they get sick with a cold, with a flu, with many other viruses, uh, the body is going to start to build their immune to that. Okay, so the more frequent that they catch a cold, the more immune they're going to be usually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when they become bigger kids, like six years and, and above, mm -hmm. you will see much less mm -hmm. respiratory infection, less cold, less flu. So to me, and that's, that's part of the immunity mm -hmm. that the body start to, to produce, okay? Thank you. Big kids have a higher chance to spread more than the small kids, oh. okay? Big kids is more like adults, right. okay? So, so, so the babies or the younger kids is much less likely to spread to other people. Okay, okay. and I think uh, um, lastly, maybe if you can advise parents um, to ease their worries or their fears? Well, what is um, uh, some advice you can give to, to parents? Well, I think it's a uh, good thing that uh, the COVID-19 in Thailand is, is under control right now at, the, at this moment. So to me, uh, if the school gonna open, which is a, which is a good news, <laughs> and uh, to me for kids, you know, they have to go to school. You know, you cannot close forever. So. So it's a good time to go back to school and uh, enjoy kids' life. Whatever they want to play, they want to laugh, they want to sing, they want to learn, then and, and enjoy their life. And we, we do in our part in the protecting them from getting the infection from the by many means that we were talking. Okay, so to me, uh, you can think about COVID, but don't uh, worry too much about that. So um, we would like to thank you very much, Dr. Carl um, from the American School of Bangkok Sukhumvit and also the Yesserin International Preparatory School. Thank you for your time thank today. You. We learned so much and we're going to take your advice to implement at our school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.